The following program is sponsored by Capitec. Simplify banking, live better. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we celebrate award winners. Travel to a private game reserve with rare white lions with Afro Soul performer Ami Faku. Taste the best of French cuisine in Johannesburg with chef Wandile Mabasso. See how a performer and fitness coach has started teaching yoga classes. Discover history come alive with a modern twist at the Kruger's latest attraction. Experience a train hotel with Miss Essay Shurufatso Musida and first runner-up Tato Mosesle. And learn about what inspires award-winning canoeist Sponelo Quella. <laughs> Situated near Lake Karicha in the Eastern Cape, we find an eco-friendly private game reserve, home to the Big Five as well as the rare White Lion. It's here we're joined by award-winning singer-songwriter Ami Faku for a getaway of good food, pampering and incredible beauty. My love for, for Afro Soul started with, you know, the music my father used to play and my church background plays a role there as well. And my personality as an individual, I'm very bubbly, I like to have fun. So I had to involve that in my music because I didn't want to listen to music that's going to bore me. I define the genre that I do as modern Afro Soul because it involves every part of who I am. Ndiketewena means I chose you. My David single was definitely um, the perfect song to describe me as an artist and what I'm trying to do. So people did actually, it, it did make a great statement, like a good first impression. It was a statement of who's Ami and what she's trying to do and how she'll be unique. And I was completely myself there. I was honest and I, I hoped for the best. And thankfully the reception was good because a lot of people were like, who's, who's this girl? Who's singing this? So it did have a great first impression. And yeah, it, it was a great introduction to what I'm trying to do. Ami is from the Eastern Cape, having been born and raised in Izinyoka Township outside Pebeja. We invited her to explore the lodge, which is an award winner just like her, having won Best Game Lodge in the Eastern Cape from the Provincial Lilizela Tourism Awards. The whole feel of the lodge is designed around as small an impact on the environment as possible. So everything we do is to fit within our uh, very green environment around us. So all of the natural wood tones, all of the shapes and dimensions of our lodge is designed to fit into the flow of our landscape. So we make sure that the entire lodge is very user friendly. It's really intimate and comfortable for small groups or large gatherings. And it really just gets the full escape from the city life. The renowned private game reserve is home to a wide variety of exciting game viewing and has been able to set itself apart from the rest due to its uniqueness as well as its many conservation efforts. Everyone knows about our white lines, everyone knows about our game drives, but we've got a lot of extra offerings. So Pumba offers archery, a fully functional health spa, photographic drives, night drives, uh, bass fishing in the correct season, and our bushwalks as well are a very popular thing, so we've got a lot to show off. The reserve boasts marvellous biodiversity, with fainbos, savanna, grassland, forest and subtropical thicket within the boundaries. This makes for a diverse and thrilling game viewing experience. Uh, because it's a private game reserve and we have a lot of animals that are being reintroduced back into the area, we've become quite familiar with them. So we know them quite well. We know how 
close we can approach them and how close we allow them to approach us. So things like white lions, elephants, rhinoceros we're getting fairly close to, which is really a nice intimate experience, allowing people really to get a, a close up and intimate viewing with an animal like that is really nice. The reserve is home to one of the few known free-ranging self-sustainable populations of white lions in Southern Africa, some of which are wild born. The highlight of a game viewing experience at Pumbaa is definitely the white lions. Um, it's what we're most well known for. So we've got a dominant white male at the moment uh, with a dominant white female and they've got three youngsters at the moment. They are then also splinter groups that you can see throughout. So one of the very important things of our pride is that it's not just white lions, it's white and tawny. Just like the grace and elegance of the White Lions, Ami's debut album Imali showed courageous spirit with impressive writing and exceptional versatility. The message I was trying to convey with Imali, it was everyday, day-to-day -day life struggles that everyone faces. So it speaks about love, family issue, um, about friendships, um, trauma bonding, about everything. It also involves happy happiness. And yeah, I just speak about day-to-day -day life experiences. As well as marveling in the presence of the white lion, Ami had the chance to try archery. I love camping, it's really cool. I just love anything that has to do with nature. I love anything that gives me adrenaline. And the archery seems to be one of those things and I'm keen to try it. Archery became an activity on Pumbaa as a means for our guests and then for little children as well to really be able to do something different. If they're not in safari or not sitting around by the pool and having a fun time, it's nice for them to come up, join a ranger, do a nice little bit of uh, shooting on the target and then from there carry on with the rest of their day. It looks easy. I mean, you, first of all, you have to get your body position correct. There's so many directions to it, so it was very difficult but really fun. But as soon as you get a hang of it, it just becomes a bit easier. Yay! Yay! <laughs> very nice. I did it. I did it, guys. As night fell over the beautiful surroundings, there was some time to reflect on the magic of the area. Being in a quiet space like this really helps me relax, unwind and be able to think more clearer. You know, I live in a city now where I feel that my brain becomes clustered there and coming back home really helps me just to relax more and work way better. My highlights in the music industry so far one would be just my debut album. I'm very proud of it because I've never had an album before and I'm proud of how it turned out. Winning the best female artist of the year um, for summer has been one of my favorite achievements. Um, being in the top 20 playlist for Barack Obama. Guys, the White House knows me. Famous. That's been a great highlight. Coming up, meet Joburg chef Wandile Mabaso, who traveled the world to learn the fine art of French cuisine. Wandile Mabaso is a boy from Soweto who grew up to be one of the country's leading chefs. Having honed his skills abroad, he returned home to shake up the Johannesburg restaurant scene with exciting experimental dining. Hi, my name is Wandile Mabaso. I'm chef and owner at Le Creative Restaurant here in Bryanston, Johannesburg. And welcome to my cave of creativity. About three 
months into finishing my culinary degree, a team of scouts came to the school and they interviewed a lot of us in school and luckily I was the only one chosen uh, to go work in Miami. From there I spent one year in Miami. I decided to venture out and uh, find uh, Michelin star training and that's when I decided to move to New York City. I ended up staying there for six years. From New York City, I moved to Paris, uh, where I stayed for another two years. So probably about 10 years all in total, uh, really abroad and training. And while in New York, I trained in uh, classical French cuisine. And I had the pleasure to train in some three-star and two-star Michelin restaurants, uh, which were in the top 50 in the world during that time. I've been back in the country for three years now, and creating this restaurant called Le Creatif is a combination of all my experiences uh, that I've been uh, through all three different continents. The inspiration of the decor in this restaurant is very, very complex. So the whole space was actually designed by Donald Nomalo, uh, probably one of the best interior designers in the country. When you walk into the restaurant, you must get that feel like, wow, it must make a statement. We also decided to do our own chef jackets, uh, which we designed, and this is made from 95% uh, paper. When the chef asked about the uniforms that he needed, I had to come up with a concept. The first most important concept is sustainability, which is what he really believes in, and I do as well and we wanted uniforms that would last for a long time, but also unique and different in design that didn't look very much like uh, a chef uniform, but that would be something that can also be worn outside. So how the paper is made, it's not common paper. They're using abaca plant, which is similar to a banana leaf, and it's grown in Ecuador and in China. With the abaca leaf, it actually it's turned into this very thin layer of paper. It also goes through the, the, the slicing process and then from there the spinning process. And from the spinning process, it goes to be threaded and it's spun into, into fabric, which is the kind of fabric that we're using for the chef jackets. As you can see, we don't even use tablecloth simply because this is made from stone um, and it's made to look like wood and then our Seats here, which are meant for durability and comfortability, look like wood, but they're actually made from stainless steel. So everything is made to look like something else that it's not. We've also got art all over the restaurant is because we do work with a lot of artists and we've sort of made the space look like an art gallery because the art is also for sale. We are all about supporting local artists and showcasing their work. Proudly displaying his art here is Arlindo Maunda, a Mozambican refugee who was encouraged to go full-time into art when working as a delivery man. With no formal training, his works have been exhibited in Germany, Dubai, the US and most recently at Le Creatifs. I was called, I came to this place, I look at a place and then we spoke about uh, the combination of art and the the display and the environment of this place. I, I was inspired by people like Kitty Petra, Andy Lindhoven and others that they brought the ballet dance into the township. They teach kids how to do the ballet. So it's what made me think of doing some ballet artworks. I like to use vibrant colors in my artworks with different subjects. Uh, depends on the mood. Because sometimes I don't even know when I start at work what is going to come out of what I'm doing. So sometimes I see when it's done. I like the tranquility. I like to see people happy. I like to see people dancing. It's our culture in Africa and everything that we do. Wandile has prepared meals for world leaders and sports stars around the globe. Even the likes of Jay-Z and Beyonce have tasted his cuisine. We change the menu every week. So for this week is actually a quail. So here we have our quail, uh, which before we cook, uh, we debone, take the bones out, and then we pound it. So we literally bang it till it's nice and flat, 
and then we season it and then inside we add Chinese spinach which I picked up at the local market. All right, so we're going to start with the sauce, which is the, the heart of this dish. And for me, I think creating something like this is a spiritual dish. While we wait for our quail to smoke with Impepo nicely, we're gonna go ahead and infuse our sauce. We throw our shallots in. So we add our wings that are from the quail, and this adds more flavor. So the sauce end up tasting more like the quail. So we're literally infusing flavors in there. This is all an infusion. Now we're gonna add our botanicals, our fain boss, all the way from still by. So we pick our ingredients very carefully. These are dried figs. Final step of the sauce, uh, all our infusions are in there. All our flavors are in. I'm quite happy with the color of the sauce. We add the uh, brown wings and we add the herbs and we brown them further with the onions. You see what that does to the color of the sauce. Now our quail is perfectly brown and it's very important to get this beautiful golden brown because that brings out a unique flavor. It brings out a little bit of crisp as well. Okay, now it's time for our plating, which is probably the fun part. In, in this cooking process, or at least at this restaurant. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and place our cauliflower puree. Then I'm placing our quail, and then I place our green meat and our cauliflower and root vegetables around the cauliflower puree. And then I'm gonna add the quail egg. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add our pickled uh, peppers and our pickled cauliflower as well our green vegetables. Now I'm finishing off with this beautiful sauce. Okay, voila, that's it. So this is our beautiful quail dish infused with impepo, infused with some fain boss coming from still by. And thank you so much Insider SA for stopping by my kitchen and my restaurant. And I hope you learned something. I definitely learned something from you guys today. As a proud ambassador of French cuisine in South Africa, Chef Wandile Mabaso has established himself as one of the true great chefs of our day. Next on the Insider SA, hang out with performer and fitness coach Jared Nurden and see how he is building his yoga business and discover how a timeless classic has returned at the Kruger Station. joined Jared Nurden, a multi-talented performer in award-winning stage productions as he shares his experience of life during lockdown. With theatres still closed, Jared has had to adapt and shift focus to keep busy and maintain a healthy body and mind. I perform my whole life let's face it, but I've been performing professionally for about 10 years and around the world for about seven years on different international and world touring productions. What inspired me to be a performer was Michael Jackson. He was an incredible triple threat performer and when I was four years old I would stand in front of the TV and just learn his songs, learn his dance moves, so he definitely inspired me. Jellico cats meet once a year at the Jelly Cool Ball, where we all rejoice. My theatre career this far has been super exciting, and I have been fortunate enough and lucky enough to go from tour to tour around the world for about seven years. And some of my favourite productions that I did was Cats the Musical, Singing in the Rain, Priscilla Queen of the Desert, the Chicago World Tour and the Rocky Horror Show that I did just recently before COVID hit. These productions that I've been involved with have won numerous awards worldwide, from Tony Awards to Olivier's, and even our own local theater awards, the Naledi Awards and Fleur de Cup Awards. The theater industry worldwide has been affected substantially by COVID-19. We've been without work for 
almost going on two years. So it's been quite a frightening experience, but it has also forced us to reinvent ourselves, to really look at ourselves and go, how else can we be a contribution to the world? What other talents do we have? One of the reinventions that I have gone through is becoming a yoga teacher. So I've been teaching clients and students in person and online. Um, I think the whole world has learned that yes, we can do physical jobs in person, which is great, but that we can also take it online as well. Um, and I think that's what's excited me about Capitech is how efficient they are online. Just the whole experience is really amazing. Adaptability and accessibility has never been more important and with the bank's remote onboarding function, anyone can join the Capitech family in a few simple steps from anywhere. And now you can have your new card delivered straight to your door, so you never need to visit a branch. I've decided to move to Capitech because it is super simple and I can do everything online and I don't have to go into any banks, especially during COVID times or to stand in lines, which no one likes. All you need is a smartphone, an SA ID or passport, email address and cell phone number. So it's as simple as going to the App Store, typing in Capitech banking app, downloading the app, popping over to it, and then following the eight step process. Capitech has made it super easy to sign up using the facial recognition feature, which is also connected to the home affairs department to authenticate that it is you opening an account. With that done, Jared can now focus on building his yoga practice and sharing the art of Zen with students from SA and the UK through online classes. I started my yoga practice before every single show whilst I was performing world tours and I found that the practice really helped my mental health, my emotional state, really getting to know my body, which is also why I called it a tune yoga stretch. So basically working mind, body and soul to attune to what's going on so that we can be a really neutral vessel before our performances. So some tips and tricks for maintaining my mental health, especially during COVID, is to create a morning routine. So I like to wake up, meditate, set your intention for the day because words become things, thoughts become things. So it's a really great way, those first few moments, don't grab your phone, rather just take those five minutes, just connect to your body, connect to your life. What do you wanna achieve for that day? So really setting intentions is super important. Meditation, breathing, you know, so often we don't take a breath, right? So, and out. A conscious breath helps hugely. Added to yoga, Jared also loves spending time riding and training horses and enjoys show jumping. Show jumping helps me as a performer and a person because horses teach you your core values in life. They teach you communication, how to feel, and yeah, they just got so much love to give, unconditional love. So it really helps you break out of your shell. Performing has taken me around the world, so I've been not able to ride and compete as much as I would like to over the past 10 years, but the plan is certainly to get back into show jumping and compete and yeah, live out my sporting dreams one day. If you would like the chance to reinvent yourself, you stand the chance of winning a 1,000 Rand cash prize. Simply reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms using hashtag live better. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Kruger Station is a lifestyle precinct in Skakuza Rest Camp along the historical Salati train line in the Kruger National Park. Situated where a makeshift boma once hosted a feast for visitors when the park first opened. This rich history of the venue has seen it fit many purposes over the years. All tourism to Kruger started right here at this very spot behind me. The bridge was built in the late 1800s and ultimately finished in 1912 with the first tourist train coming in in 1923 
where the train would park off here, the guests would disembark and be welcomed by Stevenson Hamilton, who was the warden at that time. And this journey, which was called the Round in Nine, became very, very popular due to this very spot right here. Originally, the Salati Railway connected Kamatipuert with Tsinin during the gold rush, before being opened to the public and eventually disbanded in 1973. The station's structure was built in the 1980s and housed the heritage train. Today, new life and a sense of modernization has been given, allowing its iconic legacy to take on new life. The character and the authenticity of Kruger Station, I think, was inherent to Kruger Station. So when we arrived at that first time, it was this dilapidated ghost shell of a station. And I think in order to celebrate it, we had to sort of just strip it down to what it is. The existing structure led every decision. You know, we didn't want to reinvent a train station when we had a train station. With Afrocentricity at the core of what they wanted to achieve, the goal was to maximize the feeling of being in a natural environment, preserving the history without seeming old-fashioned. Our focus was to create a layer of interest without taking away what was there. So we worked on layers of texture, pattern, but quite subtly and very much within the train sort of language. At the same time, we wanted to incorporate a lot of South African designs, so that I think 90% of it is locally sourced. There was a tremendous sense of eagerness to open their doors to the public and show off all of the amenities they provide, including a restaurant, deli, bar, kids' play area and gift shop. To create a casual and elegant dining space, I think the important underlying tone of it is it's got to be friendly. So elegance sounds odd, it's actually quite easy to achieve um, because you just got to provide notes of sparkle. We even went into the river and foraged for some dried out plants. And I think that setting works really well as a comfortable but sort of unique and curious dining space. From being able to select an incredible food, you walk through to this wonderful retail store. And I think in many ways for us it was a curio store with a conscience because every single piece there has been sourced thoughtfully and has some sort of incredible backstory. The menu focuses on locally sourced and sustainable ingredients with a diverse range of options to suit any palate. Kruger Station has a very much artisanal food menu where we source our produce from local suppliers and uh, be able to, to let the produce do the talking. We have a cuisine that is generous, wholesome, but quite refreshing. More than just a place to enjoy delicious foods, the Kruger Station also boasts a range of other points of interest, including a cinema where patrons can enjoy a game viewing experience that impressively mimics the real thing. So one of the inspirations for the 360 cinema was that if you drove every single road in the Kruger National Park, you'd see less than 5% of the park. So in the theater, we can bring you that other 95%. We can get you close to the animals, we can put you at the watering holes of sunset, and just give you a fantastic surround audiovisual immersive experience. The space is loaded with a rich sense of history that can clearly still be felt to this day. Bringing the past to life has certainly helped create a sense of excitement. Coming up, experience the Kruger Shalati with Miss SA Shurufatso Musida and first runner-up Tato Mosesle. Kruger Shalati, the train on the bridge, is an exciting new offering at the Kruger National Park. Situated above the Sabi River, paying homage to how explorers enjoyed the park 100 years ago. It's here that we spend time with Miss S.A. Shurufatso Musida and first runner-up Tato Mosese. I'm Shurufatso Musida, Miss South Africa 2020, and it's my first time at the Kruger Shalati. I'm super, super, super excited to explore this place, the beautiful weather and the animals. Um, so this is going to be an amazing experience. <laughs> it's also my first time. I'm so excited. My name is Tato Mosese. I am the first runner-up for Miss South Africa and Miss Supranational South Africa. I'm also looking forward to that lovely scenery, you know, the animals, and just to experience African luxury, exactly. you know. Exactly. So, so excited. <laughs> Hi, 
Kiba. <laughs> Can I come through? Yes, please. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Hello. How amazing is this place? I'm actually very blown away. Like the first thing I noticed was the views. Like the views everywhere. And imagine you're gonna be on the bed and you can still see that view. That's literally like my favorite thing. Even in the bath. Even in the bath. <laughs> you see and the view. On top of that, we're on a train. <laughs> A train on We're a on bridge. A, a train on a bridge. This is absolutely, absolutely amazing. It's stunning. I feel like we needed this. We did, especially from being so busy with work and everything. No, it's, it's, it's great to <sighs> just sit back and unwind. The glass walled rooms allow for infinite views of the Sabi River and surrounding Kruger National Park in all its beauty. How beautiful is this view, guys? It's amazing. Let me see. What are you looking at? <gasps> What are you looking at? A buffalo. Let me see. A buffalo. <laughs> Why are you saying a buffalo while looking at me? <laughs> Since entering the pageant, it has been the best journey of my life. I have grown in so many ways. I got to move to Johannesburg. I used to live in Flagstorp Northwest. I am now doing things that I never thought I would do. My schedule is so different. Every other day is so unique to another. And I feel so blessed to be part of this journey that constantly grows you day by day. Mm. And for you? I think it's been the same. I was a girl before, a very insecure girl before, and then this competition made me step literally into my power, mm. where I find myself being fearless, being daring, you know, yes. learning to enjoy life. I feel like my biggest mandate now is to be happy. Mm. So I surround myself with people like that and the competition. <laughs> and the competition taught me that, like it mm. taught me that you know what, as a person, I am enough and whoever I bring into my space is just an extension of me. Wow. So I feel like I've grown so much and this journey has been the best journey of my life. I still can't believe that we get to live this life. It's amazing. It's amazing. My favorite thing about South Africa is the people. You could travel anywhere around the world, but there's nothing like a South African community. And I say community because we are raised on Ubuntu and that's who we are, meaning that from the first day I met Sato, it's almost like you've known her for years type of thing. We can have a conversation like we've met before, and that's because South Africans have this way of making everyone feel like family, no matter who you are, where you're from, what you have and what you don't have. And I feel blessed to be a representative of that. We think we have flavor. We definitely have flavor. Can I embarrass you? Okay. We've got flavor. Yes, we do. <laughs> We've got flavor. How about you? I've got flavor. Yes, I do. <laughs> we got flavor. How about I feel like Beyonce. Yeah, I'm gonna be gonna be body. I think how we best support and care for each other is by understanding each other's love languages, to be honest. We are so different but very alike in so many ways, where we show love differently, but then we know that it's the purest form of love. I mean, the first time we sat down together, we just listened to one another and we just spoke. But the biggest foundation that we have is the fact that we pray together. A lot of people don't understand that with the final night, we're the final two on that stage. And it felt like it was okay because her win was my win and my win was her win. And it's so beautiful that we get to do all of these things together because it still feels like we are in that hotel room praying and just loving each other. We live five minutes away from each other. So what I really appreciate is when we spend time together. I love it when someone is going through something, I say come over or she'll say come over. And then we'll watch a movie, we'll talk about it and it will be okay. We'll come up with, I love Shudu because she's practical. So she'll come up with steps to take to solve the issue. And I love how it's so functional and it's a beautiful relationship. I'm so grateful for you. Aww. I wouldn't say I love you, you know, because I'm a G. You're a G. But, <laughs> but she said you love me. And I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> With the sun setting over the park, it was time to enjoy dinner. As great friends, Shudu has had the opportunity to impress Tato with her cooking before. I can cook, um, I just don't cook often. My favorite meal to cook has to be a good curry because I believe in hearty, warm meals. Um, I actually made it for her the I other day. I remember it was actually <laughs> delicious. I give it a nine out of 10. Really? Yes. Oh my God. The one is just for presentation, but the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> it would have been 10 out of 10, it was delicious. 
and yeah i'd say i know how to cook mm. i actually took consumer studies in school so mm. i know how to follow a recipe really well so i cook almost every day of the week and then on weekends i'll go out mm. with friends and stuff but my favorite meal is any meal made by my mother it's my favorite meal it just reminds you of home mm. like what you're saying that hearty feeling that hearty feeling yeah but you still haven't cooked for me so i'm coming <laughs> <laughs> it's coming <laughs> During my time as a model, I learned to eat healthy, but at the same time, not deprive myself of my guilty pleasures. So for example, I do love a good burger and a pizza every now and again. Or oh, cake, I really love cake. So I'll have that, but it's not an everyday thing. I believe in moderation and just I'm making sure that you give your body the energy and nutrition that it needs. I just love food that's really well prepared. I try and eat a balanced diet to make sure I get everything I need. And I do love sweets. That's my guilty pleasure. I'm always chewing on some bubble gum <laughs> or like a sweetie, but I love that. It's always like our minds in overdrive all the time. So when you're surrounded by nature, you're surrounded by the people here, you're surrounded by the sounds of the river. And even when you're in your room, all you see is tranquility. Speaking of those rooms, I can't wait to slip into that big bed. And oh gosh. <laughs> and the weather allows. <laughs> I've actually never been on a train, so let alone sleeping on a train, it's so exciting for me. I know that you can always count on me. Now you for sure. <laughs> That's what friends are for. Oh, is that for me? Yes, it's for me. <laughs> After a comfortable night's rest, Tato shared her morning routine, taking full advantage of the environment. I always wake up at six o'clock, I stay in bed, I say a little prayer, and then I center myself towards myself, and then I go on social media. But in this case, I think I should go and see the sunrise instead of social media. I think every sunrise is so beautiful, it's so unique. And what I love about the sunrise is that it gives me new hope. It's a promise of new opportunities. It's so calming. Family is so important to me, especially during the pandemic. I live away from home, so I make sure to talk to my dad every morning. In fact, he calls me every morning. It's sort of like my second alarm. And I think we should all appreciate them while they're still with us. Make sure to contact your loved ones. I actually wish they were here with me now to experience this beautiful view. Shudu's way of centering her life is by pampering herself and indulging in spa treatments. Being in a pageant can be quite stressful because everyone is watching you. It's almost like you're put on this pedestal where sometimes people can forget that you're a human being. So how I'd like to unwind and just relax is by checking in with myself, making sure that at all times I do breathing exercises, I take walks, but sometimes I like a little luxury. So I like spa days so where I sit back and have my body pampered and just feel good at the end of the day. Today we're going to be doing a, a Shigia travel massage, which is used by the African soldiers back in the olden days. They used the Shigia when they've got stiff muscles to release tension on those muscles. So today we're doing the same on our clients to release tension and improving blood circulation. It also helps with relaxing the body. I feel absolutely rejuvenated and I feel amazing. I really, really needed this. I think the most relaxing massage I've had in a while. These two ambitious, overachieving award winners have so many great things planned for their futures. After the doors, the pageant opened for them both. I am preparing mentally, physically, working really hard with Verna. Miss Supranational is all about aspirational and inspirational women, and I'm so proud that I get to represent my country. So how I've been preparing for Miss World is through being Miss South Africa, I believe. Miss World is about beauty with a purpose. So my Beauty with a Purpose campaign is Mental Health Awareness, and we've been working towards that. There's a book that's coming out in the next month or so, a children's book about mental health, because I've faced a lot of media, negative media publicity, and scrutiny and online bullying. But how I learned to deal with it was through a book that I read actually called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, where it basically said, don't take anything personally and how people treat you is a reflection of who they are, not a reflection of you. And I've always learned, especially through mental health, 
that a bad day doesn't mean a bad life. So if I feel like I need to check in or check out by taking time out to myself, I do that. So I do love settings like these because they help me recharge and help me pull myself towards myself. Historical drives afford guests the rare opportunity to learn about the origins of the Kruger National Park. A journey of discovery into how the land became a space where the public could enjoy the wonders of the African bush. In 1898, Paul Kruger, he was the president at the time, he actually set aside an area between Sabi River and Crocodile Bridge as a wilderness area. Mm -hmm. So basically, in 1902, James Stevenson Hamilton was appointed as the first warden of that area. So his duty was to chase all of the hunters and poachers off the property so that he can conserve the whole natural place which is actually existing. Oh, okay. So from there, it actually grew to now 2 million hectares, which we've got it today. Oh, wow. So if you look behind you, there's a monument right up at the top. Mm. Mm. It's just a symbol of him still, his presence is still here. Yeah. So it's like he's still looking over the park. Exactly. Okay. Wow. So if you look here as well, this is the plaque that says when he was born and when he passed away. Right, so we can actually expect to find clip springers, rock dusties around here, some plated lizards as well. But other than that, look, look at that. Wow. Yo, this is beautiful. Look at that. We're on top of the world. This is amazing. Yeah. But also this the greenery, so cool. like the, you, you breathe such clean air. Exactly. So amazing. as far as you can see, this is all the Kruger National Park. Wow. Yeah. Yo, it's beautiful. No, it really, really is. But it also just shows the diversity and beauty of this country. Mm. And we get to represent that on the How world stage. How amazing is that we don't just represent people, but we also represent wildlife, the nature, the beauty, the calmness. All of this. The power. I'm just so excited. No, I'm very, very excited to take Africa to the world. So hopefully the future holds for both of us international crowns. And beyond that, I think our friendship, it was not just for the duration of the pageant, it's continuing and I would love to be old with her coming to places like these, like the Kruger Shalati together. That is very, very sweet. I think she's right, the future, I hope it holds the international crowns, but I also hope the future holds joy and happiness. I think what the COVID-19 pandemic showed us is that we can't really guarantee anything, but we can definitely live in the moment. Fully rested and rejuvenated, it's time for these powerful women to get back to their lives and continue in their efforts to inspire others. Next on the Insider Essay, be moved by the story of canoeist Sponello Quella and his desire to inspire others. Sponsored by Capitec. Simplify banking. Live better. Bonello Quella is an athlete who has shown excellence in a sport where even just competing is reserved for the fittest among us. This family man with aspirations of creating opportunities for others in his community is viewed by many as a leader. I grew up uh, in Shwanitam at the place under Wazulu Natal. We were five kids and uh, I was living with a very big family with my granny and my aunties and my uncles. So we've been told that um, respect is something that's very important in life um, of, of, um, of a person. So I grew up with that discipline, knowing that uh, I had to respect everyone, especially the elders. I got in canoeing, I think it was in 2005. Um, one of my friends, they were already pegging by that time. So the club, uh, Umzinyati Canoe Club, they wanted to develop or to have a development club here at Shongwani Dam. So likely I was one of those guys who get called to, to come and, and try this thing they called canoeing. So then from there, uh, we started um, being teached how to sit in a boat, how to run with the boat. They told us about the doozy. Then uh, from there, uh, I started to be in love with the sport. Yeah, I, then I didn't look back. Sponello has won multiple awards, including the doubles K2 title in the doozy with Andy Burkett in 2014. A major life goal for him is to be the first black man to win the event solo. 
Uh, over the years, I've won um, a couple of medals, like, like this one. This was my first top 10 in a doozy, um, the 2009 ones. And this one is the very uh, close one to my heart, the one that we won with Andy Beckett, 2014, uh, my first win in a doozy. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got too many, like my 2013 one, uh, this, uh, this one I like the most because I dominated in a doozy. Uh, on day one, I won the day one and I won the day two for the first time. Um, in the history of Doozy for the, um, a, a black person to win the day two. Yeah, and we can go on and on. As you can see, there are too many medals, but um, I, I, I'll go straight to this one, to the last one, the 2021. And um, this one is more, it's more special as well. At the K2 year, uh, the one that we, we came second with Tulan Mbanjwa, um, it was something more special to us um, to get as a, as a black legend. Spornello has also said that winning the Doozy title would be a fitting way to honor his mother, who sadly passed away last year. He has always been close with his family, who have great respect for what he has achieved. Oh, Spornello, ube ingane elungil, ingane etanda ubdala. Begunga yona ingane eno laga ne telilai. Ugu ina kugaswanelo kuyas jabli satina jengom den. Ngoba ukupula i kamalitu. Aga i kupuli nakpela ukupula ne familiak. Jengom den. Kuyas jabli saga kulu indondo engi engi bone kuyang jabli ngakulu. Yeah, what can I say? My family is a, it's a very different family uh, because when I'm going to rest, especially like a doozy, I always come here to, to my granny's house uh, to ask for the blessing to, to my coco. Uh, she always took me to, to a rondova uh, and she signed Pepo there to, to ask the ancestors uh, to, to be with me. So that gave me the, the belief and, and the hope that um, I'll go well on Tuesday because I'm not just on my own. I've got other people that um, we don't see that they are there uh, supporting me uh, as well and giving me power and strength. So that does give me the, um, uh, the power in the water to, to win the race or to, to wish or to try by all means to, to win the race. Spornello is grateful for opportunities he received through education and has since decided to give back. This is at Amini Primary School, um, my first school I attended at, at my young age. Uh, this place is, means a lot to me uh, because that's where I started um, studying and uh, my primaries. And um, yeah, I always, uh, when I go past uh, this school, um, thinking and remembering the good memories of me while I was still a, a lighty. Two years back, um, I've decided uh, to, to come back to, to my primary to do a repaint because the paint, it was there for a very long time. Maybe, if I'm not mistaken, maybe for 15 years. So on Mandela Day, I tried to come back and, and repaint the school. I wanted to see the school new, or to, to bring a new, a new look um, to the school for, for the kids that are, are still studying in this school. Guys, this is my first class. It's so bringing so many memories to come back on this class, because I still remember sitting on that desk uh, looking at, um, at the backboard today and um, watching our teacher teaching us. What I've learned um, in this class or here at Amini Primary School, it's, um, it's a discipline. And because discipline is everything, especially to us uh, who are doing the sports, whereby you have to team up with someone else sometimes. You have to be disciplined to everything, to time, um, to, to, to your partner, to everything that you do together. Out on the water where he is most at home, Sponello is able to reflect on what it is that sets him apart from the rest. When I'm training for Tuzi, I always train twice a day, every day, uh, starting on Monday and finishing on Saturdays. On my training program, I always mix the two things of running and pegging at the same time. Because that does help a lot in terms of the doozy, because we all know that the doozy is a two combination of, of, of running and, uh, and pegging at the same time. So it's always helping to, to build your body to be ready for, for that and uh, to build those strength and, and, and your core as well, to be strong and ready for, uh, for the challenge of the doozy. 
Uh, I'm advising uh, all the youth in South Africa to, to take part in sports because sports does help you a lot in terms of running away from danger and does help you a lot in terms of discipline as well to, to be able to, to be a person who knows what he wants in life and what to want to achieve as well. With so many achievements under his belt, we wish Sponelo Quella the very best in actualizing his life's dream. Join us again next week as we celebrate Mother Nature with Miss Universe 2019 Zozibini Tunzi. Another feel good production.